This is our milk receiving area where we can receive tanker trucks of product. We can receive up to two tanker trucks at a time. We have two 8,000 gallon silos where we can store that product um, before we go through processing. So if a client um, wants to bring in their own product to, for us to do studies on, um, we're able to receive that product here. From receiving, the product can be pumped through our separation and pasteurization system. We have multiple set points on our pasteurization system, so depending on what kind of a heat treatment the customer wants, we're able to meet their needs. We have two filtration systems. The first one I'm going to talk about is our high pressure nano and reverse osmosis filtration system. We have two different membrane housings we can use in this unit, either a 3.8 or an 8 inch housing. This allows us to do various um, levels of, of concentration and various flow rates for the unit, depending on, again, what the client will, what, would want to work on. We also have a single pass, four stage, ultra or micro filtration system. This system has four stages um, with four separate housings in the six inch or in the six inch format. This system also has pressure transducers and flow meters and all of the retentate and permeate lines that allows us to track the performance of the membrane during the concentration process. Um, with this unit we can process about a thousand pounds per hour um, of skim milk into milk protein concentrate. 75 doing about a 60 to 65 percent dye filtration. This section of the plant has our evaporation and drying equipment. All of our equipment is controlled with a touch screen by our operators. We have a variety of unit operations from evaporation to drying. Now I'm going to walk you through the general process flow of the evaporation and drying section. First of all we have our pasteurized holding tank. We can either hold whey or various other milk-based ingredients in this holding tank. From this holding tank, we'll pump it to our evaporation section. Our evaporator consists of a seven-pass falling film evaporator. It also has a high-con finisher section. The way the evaporator works is the milk is pumped to the top of the evaporator that you'll see is almost 40 feet above. From there, it will make four passes in the primary chamber and from there it'll go to the high concentration finisher side and we'll make three passes in the high concentration finisher side. Um, as a typical example, we can process about 1,700 pounds of milk an hour and we'll concentrate it from about 9% solids to about 52% solids by the time it comes out of the evaporator. A special feature is that it is a falling film. This limits the heat exposure to the product so if we have heat sensitive products, we're able to concentrate them in this falling film evaporator. From the evaporator, the concentrated milk or whey product is transferred to our crystallizer tank in products that are high in lactose and require lactose crystallization. We do controlled cooling on the product to crystallize the lactose. From our lactose crystallizer, the dairy product is then going to be transferred to our drying section. Prior to that, it has to be preheated. So from the crystallizer tank, we pump to a shell and tube heat exchanger where we can preheat the product prior to sending it to the dryer. From the crystallizer, the product is going to be pumped through the heat exchanger and then through a high pressure pump to send it to the top of the dryer. So it'll be pumped all the way up to the, to the ceiling, about almost 40 feet to the top of the dryer where it will start the drying process. So at this point, the concentrated dairy product is sent to the top of the dryer under high pressure and passes through a nozzle to distribute it in small particles for the drying process. Part of the key to the drying process with this dryer is it has a large primary drying chamber. This allows us to produce a powder that has a particle size that would be similar to commercial scale production. In the primary drying chamber, the powder will be dried to about 10% moisture. From there, we have two possible paths that we can take. The way the dryer is set up now is it will fall directly out of the primary drying chamber into our vi vibrating fluid bed dryer. We'll have our second stage of the drying process. We also have the opportunity to utilize a timing belt. The timing belt is placed underneath the primary chamber and the powder first goes through the timing belt before it's dropped into the fluid bed. If we want to make non-hygroscopic whey products, the timing belt is utilized to crystallize the lactose prim 
prior to the secondary drying that we have in the vibrating fluid bed. I wanted to explain an additional feature of our vibrating fluid bed dryer. It has three separate zones in, two that are for heating and one that's for cooling. Um, it also gives us the ability to produce instantized dairy ingredients as well. Once the powder exits the vibrating fluid bed dryer, we're going to send it up to the second floor where we have our sifting process. So the dry powder is passed through, passed through our mill system and then sifted and then sent back down to the first floor where we have our bagging operation. From the sifter, the powder is sent down to our bagging operation where it's simply packaged into a 50 pound bag and hand, hand sewn. Our overall drying capacity is the ability to remove 300 pounds of water per hour. Mm -hmm.